Good afternoon. Um, let me start by saying stop complaining. <laughs> the topic today is about complaining about your lack of lo luck in love. And I'm going to tell you there's no luck in love. And I'll explain all about that in a moment because you might be going, what do you mean there's no luck in love? It's all opportunity. It's like, I'll explain. Before I jump into the topic and give you the full treatment, let me start by introducing myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, and also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help women create balance in life, love and business, which is why I am a passionate champion. I should say, because I'm a passionate champion. Yeah, because, not why. And also, I started these talks almost three years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, which is why today we're episode number 847, 840, well, the number in the title is accurate. I don't always keep track. Um, so if you haven't seen my talks before, I do these every day, which is why it's over 800, almost 850 of these. And the topic today is one of these um, maybe awakening, maybe troubling, maybe challenging topics that will hopefully give you some inspiration and some guidance. I don't leave you hanging. <laughs> I actually give you some guidance. So again, the topic today is um, complaining about your lack of luck in love. There's three L's. I'm pretty really done the better title than that. Complaining about your lack of luck in love doesn't work. Here's what does. So first of all, let me burst a few bubbles. Um, successful love and relationships, I pre pre preface that intentionally, it's not a matter of luck. It's not a ma matter of coincidence. It's not a matter of serendipity, except when, <laughs> or I've got to, got to put a caveat in, when you do all the work preparing for it and then suddenly it falls into place as if it was done by magic. But it isn't magic. It's alignment, and I'll get to that in a moment. In the same thing, any relationship is a matter of luck because a lot of times we go out on dates because we swipe somebody on an app and met somebody we happen to like and go out with and hook up with and be in a relationship with. But it may not be a successful relationship, and it may not be what you want, but hey, it's luck. And so the thing I want to say is that luck is only prevalent when you don't take... There we go. <laughs> Downloads happen when I'm in the most opportune moments. Luck doesn't happen. Excuse me. Luck only happens when you don't know what's going on. And if you don't know what's going on, then you can blindly go about dating and everything's going to be fine to the degree that it is. But if you don't get what you want in relationships and love, listen up because this will explain why things aren't going the way you want and how you can make it work for you. And this is the thing. We have this set of assumptions we have in life as human beings, I have had them as well, so I'm not saying I'm immune to that, better at it now, but not immune to it, about how relationships should happen. And for most people, the belief system is that relationships are kind of by happenstance. It's by the luck of the draw, you get who you get and that's the way it's going to be. I remember when I was in high school, and I think maybe a bunch of people I know have been through the same experience, I was looking around at who was hooking up with who, and it's kind of like, if you had the best luck, you get with the best person, but then you get lower down the totem pole. It's like being picked for a football team, or I'm English, a football team or a baseball team. And you're, it's a pickup game, so you're basically being picked. And if you're the last one to be picked, you get to the bottom of the barrel. And for some people in dating, it felt like that. That maybe they didn't feel like they were the most attractive it person, so they couldn't have first choice. That's not true. Excuse me, let me say that another way. It may have happened to you, but the actual belief system is not true. And hang on a second, I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm waiting for one more um, pain point before I get to the pleasure points, so to speak. If you know sales, you know this, you've got to talk about the pain before you talk about the pleasure and the solution. So before I talk to the solution, I want to talk to the problem. So there's one more piece that I think is coming through, so hang on one second as I process it. So again, luck of the draw, you get what you're given. Not feeling you deserve the best, so you settle for less than you want. Let me say that one again, because that one didn't say earlier. Not believing you're worthy of what you want to have, so you settle for less than what you really want, and you make do with that. Does that ring any bells? That's not required either. There's another one in here. It's coming. <laughs> if you've seen a broadcast before that happens, where stuff will come through, and sometimes it comes through like before I'm ready for it, and sometimes it comes through after I'm ready for it. This is one of those. So I know there's another piece. You know what? I'll, I'll have to come back to it because it's not showing up. So let me speak to solution orientations, and if another problem shows up, I'll give you that then. I love the way spirit works. So 
your dating experiences haven't been the way you wanted because you've made some bad choices or you basically haven't trusted or you believe that luck was going against you. This is sort of the other one I think I'm thinking of. Some people out there, not you perhaps, and I certainly did it myself, so I'm going to claim it from myself, believe that I wasn't deserving of the best, so I would look at my choices as being bad luck choices, and that's no offense to any of my past girlfriends. That was my belief system running. I didn't know then what I know now. Hindsight is such a wonderful skill. <laughs> but what I want to say to you, in case you're in the same boat where you've been looking at your relationship choices thinking you have to settle for less than you deserve, or that you've got to just put up with what you get because you don't have freedom to choose, stop it. It's not true. In fact, what I would actually say more um, bluntly is you have way more choice than you think you do. But you've been believing what you've experienced as being the way things are. And it's interesting because we do that. We tend to fall into habits because of what we learn in the world. These, these, by the way, what I'm teaching about here are life skills beyond just relationship, but using relationship as the model, the template, the format for you to work with. So the piece I want to speak to is having an understanding that you have the freedom to choose your relationship. And let me say another way because I'm going in a path that doesn't fit. Okay, let me back up a second. I'm not saying you can choose a specific person out in the world that you've had your eye on, that sort of thing. I'm not talking about that. But the quality, context, experience of relationship that you want is totally within your grasp of choice when you choose it. If only it was that simple. Sorry, I have to, I have to cut them off before you get to it. It's like, oh, it's so easy. Just believe what you want. You can have what you want. Yes and no. Because, and I said this before in other choices, what you think you believe and what you actually really get don't always line up. But I don't want to go that path yet. So let me go somewhere else first. Excuse me, I want to argue with my own belief systems <laughs> and myself in here. So, quick recap. We, we put ourselves in a position where we believe our value, our worth, and what we can have is less than what we really deserve, and so we settle for less than we want. This is a, um, this is a trap we fall into because we think that's the way society teaches. Hi, Sue. Nice to see you, my broadcast. Thank you for being with me. So what I'm going to speak to is how you can get out of that trap of beliefs that don't work for you and choose where you want to go so you can have what you really want. And again, I'm not talking about a specific person because if you've got your own somebody in particular, I can't promise you're going to get that person. You might be able to, but I don't want to put it that boat because it's not about target acquisition. <laughs> this is about understanding how relationships work. But more importantly, it's how the relationship you have with yourself works is the first step. And I've become pretty adamant about this in recent broadcasts, that it's your relationship with yourself first that absolutely must be the piece that you sort out and you grow into and you step into. Because if you don't have that, then you will not have the chance to shift. So first of all, as I mentioned, settling for less than you deserve because you don't think you can have it is a totally internally wired limitation that's not true. So first of all, you start realigning the beliefs inside, which means that the relationship you have with yourself has to change. I was thinking about another topic today, which I'm not going to talk about yet, but it's about believing that you don't have freedom to choose. So I'm putting in here. You do have freedom to choose. And it requires, it absolutely requires that you make the choice from a holistic place. But we aren't usually wired to think that way. We believe that we are the result of our upbringing from our parents. We believe that we're, up, we're the result of our societal standards. We believe that we can't have what we want because that's not in the framework that we were raised with our peer group. None of that is true. None of that is true. When you understand who you really are, and I'm going to go spiritual for a minute, so hold on to your hats. <laughs> um, I thought I was going to drop in today. I knew it was going to do that. We, <laughs> in my belief system, it may not be yours, but under my belief system, um, we are divine beings having a human experience. Spiritual, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. I'm not going to get a woo-woo on you, but I'm going to make some points here. If that is a premise you're willing to buy into or to lean into and understand, we have all the same common source. Independent of circumstance, independent of behavior, independent of history, independent of family. We're all sourced and supplied by that greater thing, spirit, love, divinity, the force, if you want to use Star, Star Wars terms. All of us are the same. But it's what we do with it is the choice. And the way that I remember one of my teachers putting it is like, you know, we, we were born in the image and likeness of God and then we've been trying to return the favor ever since. We've been trying to anthropomorphize God as a human being, which is one of the, I believe, falsehoods of our 
culture. Anyway, that's a whole other rant I could go on that could go for hours. Let me get off that one. So my invitation to you, my recommendation to you is to start changing your, um, the way you see yourself in the mirror, the way you see yourself when you're sitting in, in your life, the way you see yourself when you're comparing yourself unfavorably against other people. Now, this is the painful piece I want to give you. Well, it might be painful, depends on you're hearing it. If you have been believing, excuse me, falsely that you're less than other people because of some programming you took on, some belief somebody convinced you of, some way you were treated by somebody else, you may have actually ex- it, it, um, created your life to reflect that. So saying you deserve more than you've been holding on to is true. At the same time, you may not actually have changed your own internal uh, framework and your life experience to reflect that because you've been buying into old programming. And this is the challenge that we have in life. It's a human experience that we face this, this, this challenge because we believe what we've been told is the way life is. And it's not the reality. But we keep thinking it is, and this is the trap we fall into. So we think we can't have what we want, so we're gonna play it by luck. And that's where the trap is. Because we have autonomy, we have freedom, we have the ability to choose what we want, and we may need to clean up our own act first. I'm, I'm, um, hmm, hmm. Okay, I'm going to talk about, uh, <laughs> going to be self exposing, as it were, in this context, because this thing is for me, my experience. My, I happen to be, Facebook's nice in a way that it shows you lots of history pictures. Um, and so pictures have shown up in my, my memories on Facebook from six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. I didn't realize how much I've changed in my appearance in those that period of years. And I'm not like singing my own praises because that would be too egotistical, and I tend not to do that. It tends to be more self-effacing, which is a trap, by the way, as well. But I'm aware that who I look like then, who I look like now, to my eye, looks more attractive than then. Now, part of it, I know, is my inner journey, because that's the other part. I've been watching, and this I talk, want to talk about to you, this I want to say to you clearly so you get it. The relationship you have with yourself will, will express itself how you, as you look in the world. And I know how I looked in the mirror 10 years ago versus how I look in the mirror now I was a different person. I've changed internally. I know my external has changed to match that. And that's the thing that I want to talk about is if, or should add to the conversation, if you're looking to raise your standards in your relationship choices out there, you've got to be willing to raise your standards with the relationship you have with the one inside here. It sounds simplistic. It isn't that simple, but it is that easy when you get focused on where you want to take the steps and how you move forward. But the piece I want to make sure you get is that you can have whatever you want in life that is yours to have as long as you align to the vision, the intention, and the um, the relationship you have with yourself to align to that. Now, now I'm going to try and give you another piece of it. Sorry, it's not coming through yet. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> this has been an interesting talk, by the way, in case you've been watching since the beginning. And if you haven't, please go back for it since the beginning. But I'm aware of these these pieces are coming through, and they're not coming through in the most fluent way that I'd like. So I'm having a bit of an articulation challenge with this. I'm not going to go back to the beginning. That's way too hard in the past now. So let me finish. Let me put another piece on the table and then wrap it up, because I think there's one more piece that's trying to come through here. Well, one thing. Okay, one sidebar I'm going to put in just to have it. One of my teachers, um, Michael Beckler, talks about this, is that luck is an acronym, which his, his way of putting it is living under conscious knowledge, L-U-C-K. And I believe that for those of us who do the work, that's an accurate statement because we're living in a place that is truly aligned to our thinking. Again, changing a relationship with yourself will shift your reality outside. And in fact, that's another term I can, all these, um, not metaphors, but, but statements I know from my teachings come through. One of those is that we, as I said, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But another piece I talk about is how our inner reality, sorry, our, our yes, our inner reality is a, ref, no, excuse me, <laughs> backwards. Our outer experience is a reflection of our inner reality. So let me say that again and I'll explain it. Our outer experience is a reflection of inner reality. There's some key differences there. The relationship we have inside is our true reality. What happens out there is a reflection of it. That's an experience we have in life. Life is an experience. We go through the journey of life and everything else. And it's our internal reflection that enforces and informs what happens out there. So what I said earlier fits in this paradigm that we don't believe we're worthy of having something, then we don't get it. 
because our experience is a reflection of what we hold true inside ourselves. So part of it is changing your beliefs. As simple as that sounds, it again, is not always easy, but changing your beliefs is a first step because you start changing what you believe, you can change your experience in the world. Then you'll start doing all the work that is to come into alignment with those beliefs because you may declare new beliefs that don't fit your reality internally. And that's where the work's gotta be done because you may have conflicts and um, discord inside because you say, well, I believe I can have this, this, and this, but part of me is gonna go, no, I don't believe that because it's tied to an old paradigm. Again, what we were raised through, raised in, and our culture we come from can be very influential on what we believe to be true and influence our choices, but, but <laughs> it is not our true reality. So you have the freedom to choose what you want when you're in the place where you can actually claim your freedom, own your freedom, and express your freedom. This, um, uh, this is the tip of an iceberg, I can tell. This, this is a much bigger topic I'm feeling on because I didn't plan on going this deep, but it's like these are little highlights I hope you get that if you take these on alone, it'll start shifting your paradigm, shifting your reality. And it is about, what well, is about the law of attraction too. It's like you believe, excuse me, what you believe becomes reality when it's a truly aligned belief with a feeling behind it. And just give, give me a quick shorthand Cliff Notes version of what law of attraction is from my understanding, because my understanding, the law of attraction works on the point of view of having a clear intention of what you want with a feeling of possibility of joy, of celebration behind it, kind of sort of. It's basically in Esther Hicks' teaching, Esther, Esther and Jerry Hicks, who's left us, but with Esther and Jerry Hicks talking about the um, understanding of how the law of attraction works, it's a vibrational frequency, but that's only a state of being. So it's like, great, you feel really great and abundant and prosperous and happy, that's wonderful. What can you do with that? So it's clear intention, what you want to have manifest, happen, create, attract, etc., fueled by your mood, your energy inside. Bringing this back to what I was talking about, because most of us have room to improve our relationship with, relationship with ourselves, that buoyancy, that freedom inside may not be as expressed as it could be. But the more you express that freedom inside, the more aligned you become inside, then the easier it is to actually manifest what you want. Now, I have no scientific data to back this up, but I know the law of attraction does work. I've had it, um, as I've said before in one of my other talks, the law of attraction works whether you believe it or not. <laughs> and sometimes it's a mother effer. And um, because, because it works the way we believe, if you don't believe good stuff, then you tend to get bad stuff. And this is the thing about law of attraction. People say, well, law of attraction is all, wa all waffle. It doesn't mean anything. Well, here's the thing. If you're, not getting what in your if you're not getting what you want in your life, where's your focus? Are you focusing on not having it? Are you feeling you can't have it? Are you believing you're not valid to have what you want? Any of those three things will be a, a, um, a jail cell to lock you out of what you want. So I know I've given you like 70 different flavors. I'm hoping one of these is landing for you because this is big stuff when you get what this is about. You can change your reality internally which then changes your experience out there in the world. That's why when I'm coaching my clients, a lot of times it doesn't look like I'm actually helping to get results because we're changing the insides. Like it's... Um, this is going to be a bad analogy, I can feel it already. But it's like you're changing the, the way that a car is tuned so that it drives better in the world. But sometimes when you do the tuning, you can't tell what's going on until you drive it. In a, in a very loose analogy, <laughs> the same thing is true in your life. If you're not aligned with your truth and you're not getting tuned up to your highest possible, possible ref, re, um, what is the term, vibrational frequency, just to use those fancy words, then you don't know what's going to happen out in the world until you change it. But when you do change what's happening inside, then the outside real, the outside experience does change. <sighs> wow. Okay, I'm going off the edge of a cliff here with this, this one, but I'll leave it where it is. So let me finish this up because I, I, <laughs> I have a client call in a minute, so I want to make sure I get off before that. But I wanted to just drop this in your lap for something to think about. If you didn't watch from the beginning, please watch from the beginning because I, I did make some sort of progress from where I started to where I am now. But I want to say that you really have this chance to Hi Amanda, nice to have you back again. Oh yes. <laughs> Hi Amanda, are you popping in popping in late? We'll have to rewatch later, but I'd love that I'm on the same time you mentioned about being in your truth. Yes, well, that's kind of the way it works. So I'm glad you glad you got it. Yes. All right, Amanda. So anyway, I'll wrap this up because I do have to get going because I have a client call myself. So how do I tie this together in a little bow? <laughs> Maybe I can't. I'll see what I can do. Thank you for thank you for the feedback, Amanda. Appreciate you being with me. Um Changing your internal experience, sure, changing your internal reality to match your outside experience. 
So in my coaching, if you're interested in finding out more, I'll put a link in the comments, you can reach out to me. I can help you with that understanding and shifting. Hopefully this has given you some inspiration to work on your own, but if you wanna go deeper and you wanna get some help, I'm pretty good at this stuff. <laughs> so I'll put a link in the comments, you can reach out to me. But I really wanna say that if you're looking in the mirror and you don't see who you want to see in the mirror, meaning you don't believe in your eyes that you're worthy and deserving, it's time to make a shift. Because everything you want is available to you when you look in the mirror and see it in your own eyes. It's, a really, it's really aligning to your true beliefs and your core values. And for some people, that's hard to do, I know, because many of us have had experiences in the past that have really knocked us sideways off our beliefs. It's hard to have that truth, reality, and experience. Because what people told you, maybe, when you're younger, got in the way of that. So this is a, um, an invitation to go a little deeper so you can actually have what you want. Thank you, Amanda. I'm glad you like it. Um, so to summarize, you can have what you want when you believe you're worthy of it. If you're doubting your belief, change that and if not, and also get some help if you feel that lines up for you because that really does work. Because when you understand that, then everything changes. So as I said, yes, I've got to get going because I've got a call. Um, I'm watching the clock. If you want help, reach out for it. If you can do it yourself, great. If you want some support, don't put it off. Get the help you need, get the love you the support you want and, and have the opportunity to get what you really want. Um, if you're watching from the back end, please go watch from the beginning because I did make sense along the way eventually. It took me a while to get there. Um, again, links will be in the comments for a chat with me if you want to have a chat. I will put a link in the comments as well because frankly, everybody can use more love. My self-love practice will be in the comments because it's a reminder to you to love yourself because that's part of the healing process is to really come back to yourself first before you go out there in the world. Um, I think that's it. Replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, this is my daily broadcast, by the way, if you haven't seen it before, join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week on this personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. My replays go to my business page, which is barryselby.author. Facebook seems to only keep about two or 300 of them, not the whole lot. So if you can't find them there, but and I do invite you to like my page on Facebook, go to my YouTube channel, where they are definitely all saved, I'll make sure of that. Um, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, as all my social media is, and there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, by the way. I'd love to build up my audience because um, that may be a safer place to put things. So with that, I thank you for watching. Uh, any questions, thoughts about that, please put them below in the comments. I'll respond after I sign off and after my client call. And uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching. And again, this is, I know, going to provoke some people. If it does, good. <laughs> and if it doesn't, watch from the beginning. You might catch it next time. Um, but I thank you for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel and something new and different maybe. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. As always, please take care of yourself because that's the only one you can take care of more easily. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. Take care.